Okay, as you can see in today's video, I'm going to go over a quick review of resistance, reactance, and impedance, and let's just get to it. Resistance. What is resistance? Now, it's hard to come up with a good definition of resistance that doesn't have the word resistance in it, like resistors resist the flow of charge. But we can say that resistance is the friction against the motion of electrons. Right? It's actually the electrons running into the material in the conductor or whatever it happens to be, whatever the charge happens to be traveling through. Okay, resistors have resistance, it's measured in ohms, and the voltage is in phase with the current. So that leads to this diagram where we have our curve for the voltage and our curve for the current. This is the voltage across the resistor, and you can see the voltage across the resistor and the current are in phase. The peaks and the troughs, the crests and the troughs occur at the same time in the cycle. And that leads to this phasor diagram where we have the current and the voltage across the resistor are in phase. There's no phase angle between them. And we typically draw them both along the positive x axis. OK, reactants. Now we're going to be talking about two kinds of reactants, capacitive and inductive reactants. But reactants is the inertia against the motion of electrons. Remember, reactants is, occurs as a reaction to changes in current and voltage. So we say it's the inertia against the motion of electrons. Okay? And capacitors and inductors both have reactants. It's also measured in ohms, and the voltage and the current are going to be out of phase in this case by 90 degrees. Now, for capacitors, we have this handy dandy device, ICE. ICE, that tells us that the current leads the voltage in a capacitive circuit by 90 degrees. And that leads to this waveform where we have, in each case, the current peaks 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians before the peak voltage. The current peaks before the voltage 90 degrees. So that tells us that the current leads the voltage in a capacitive circuit by 90 degrees. And we draw the phasor diagram like this, where we have the current along the positive x, the voltage across the capacitor on the negative y, because the current leads the voltage, or the voltage lags the current by 90 degrees. This angle in here, obviously, is 90 degrees. OK? So that is the situation for capacitors. Now, for inductors, it's going to be the opposite. We have Le. So we have Le, and for capacitors, we have ICE. And some people say Le, the Iceman. OK? To remember those. Or maybe you could say Ellie, the ice woman. But in this case, we know the voltage leads the current by 90 degrees for an inductive circuit. And that gives us this form for our voltage curve and our current curve. You can see in this case, the voltage peak occurs 90 degrees before pi over 2 radians before the current peak, 90 degrees before voltage before current. And that is 90 degrees. And that's because for inductors, the voltage leads the current by 90 degrees in an inductive circuit. And that gives us this phase diagram where we have the voltage across the inductor. The voltage is ahead of the current by 90 degrees. OK? So remember, that's the difference between capacitive reactants and inductor reactants, capacitors and inductors, LE, the Iceman. Now, impedance, what is impedance? Impedance is simply the sum of all forms of opposition to electron flow. And that occurs, or that includes, both the resistance and the reactances, or the resistance and the reactance. It's also measured in ohms. And if we have RC or RL circuits, that means in each of those cases, the voltage is going to be out of phase with the current. It's going to be out of phase somewhere between 0 and 90 degrees. If you have a pure, react, uh, pure capacitive or a pure inductive circuit, then it will be 90 degrees. When you combine inductors and reactors re and resistors, or you combine capacitors and resistors, it will be somewhere between 0 and 90 degrees. OK? Now, this is the table that we're going to use. And I'm just going to go over it, sum, uh, summing up the information we, we have for resistors, capacitors, and inductors. If we have a resistor, resistors have resistance. 
The resistance is the ratio of the voltage to the current. A pure resistor has no reactance. It has a phase angle of zero degrees. A capacitor, a pure capacitor, has no resistance, but does have reactance. And this is how we calculate the capacitive reactance is one over two pi times the frequency time frequency times the frequency times the capacitance of the capacitor. As we said earlier, the phase angle is minus 90 degrees because the voltage lags the current. Okay? The angle between the current and the voltage is 90 degrees, or minus 90 degrees. For an inductor, a pure inductor, okay, has no resistance, ideal capacitor, ideal inductor, but an ideal inductor has no resistance but does have reactance, which we calculate 2 pi times the frequency of the source times the inductance of the inductor. And the angle between the current and the voltage is positive 90 degrees because the voltage leads the current. Okay? Now, if we have RL and RC and RLC circuits, then this is the situation. For an RC circuit, we calculate the impedance as the square root of R squared plus XC squared. So it's the resistance squared plus the capacitive reactance squared. The phase angle between those two will be negative. The voltage will lag the current. It'll be somewhere between zero and minus 90 degrees. Okay? Now for an RL circuit, we calculate the impedance as the square root of R squared plus XL squared, this resistance squared, plus the inductive reactance squared. And in this case, the phase angle is going to be positive when we have RL circuits. And it will be somewhere between zero and positive 90 degrees because the voltage leads the current. All right, when we combine all three, the impedance is calculated as the square root of R squared plus the difference between the inductive and the capacitive reactances squared. All right, and if the inductive reactance is greater than the capacitive reactance, then the phase angle will be positive. If the capacitive reactance is greater than the inductive reactance, then the phase angle will be negative. It will still be somewhere between zero and 90 degrees, okay? So that is a summary of resistance, reactance, and impedance for resistors, inductors, and capacitors. All right, in AC circuits. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that help. If you did, please do all the following three things. Uh, subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video and leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the next video.